Good afternoon, everybody. Please take a seat if you'd like to join for these next 20 minutes. My name is Jason Gregory. I work in the Microsoft 365 product marketing team. For the next 20 minutes, I'm going to walk you through some of the greatest innovations that we have in M365. And there's no better way to do that than to go through 35 demos in 20 minutes. Um, this is my way of showing all the greatest things that are either announced and available today or some of the things that we announced this week. I'm going to structure this presentation in three areas. The first one is teamwork and collaboration. And then I'm going to talk about productivity on the go. And last but not least, how AI, how we put AI to work on your behalf. So let's jump right in. We'll start off with, with a brief Teams overview. For those who have not used Teams, this is where I use my chat. This is where I structure my Teams. I have a Teams channel where I have all the collaboration with my, with my colleagues, things like announcements. I also have my calendar, which is synchronized to Outlook, my PSTN calling capabilities, and last but not least, where I do my file sharing and, and access to my OneDrive. Within Teams, we've got, we've got inline translation. So when you have a foreign line, you press this menu. It can directly translate up to, up to 36 languages directly in line here. We've also added support for chat pop-out. So you can have multiple windows open at once simply by pressing this icon at the top right. A great way of having multiple chat windows open whilst you're on a meeting, for example, for multitasking. We've also got the capability to add multiple people to an existing chat, which is a really efficient way to bring people up to speed without having to give them the full details from the beginning. So here we're adding a person. You could choose to include all the chat history, or just the history for a past couple of days, or even no history at all. Another great thing is you can also include guests. It doesn't have to be people from your, from your company. We've added support for private channels as well. So sometimes when you have a team and you want to have a private conversation with a subset of that without creating a new team, you simply create a channel. You toggle the privacy setting to private. You add a couple of people to the, to the, to the private channel. And what you'll see here once we've done that, you'll see a little icon, a, a little padlock, which indicates which, cha which channels are, are for private conversations. Those which have a, a little padlock like that will not be shown to anyone else. So it's just the people in that private channel. Some messages are more urgent than others. And so we have the ability, with this little exclamation mark here, to configure either an important message, which will show up in a red banner, so it's really visually standing out, or we have the ability to convert it to an urgent message, which is a requirement in the healthcare industry where you need to be able to send a message every two minutes until they respond to really let you know that it's an urgent message. Sometimes you want to get quick information from a team on certain things like a, a poll. Like we have a team morale event here. And right within teams, you don't have to leave. You can create a, a, a short poll, like what activity would you like to do? Casino night, fancy dinner, bowling. You submit this into the channel, and you can vote on it. A really effective way of seeing people's reactions and a great way of, of getting a team together for a function. We've also got support for Teams checklists. So say you're working in a small group, you come out of a meeting, and you have like four or five actions you jointly want to work on. You can put those items here together in a checklist. And once we send this checklist to the group, anyone can go in there, collaborate on this list, check them off, and of course, once you've done that, you save changes, and you're able, easily able to view the checklist status to see what actions have been completed by others. Now, similar to polls, but slightly, slightly deeper, if you want to get slightly more insightful feedback from the people you're polling, we can do these surveys. So here, for example, we have an SLT review. And as you can see, you can put multiple choice questions. You could put like a rating, like how did, how did you feel that this session went, for example. And people can vote directly on that. You can even change the scale from a 5 to a 10. Once you, pre once you submit that, you send it on the channel. And this is just a really effective way of doing a survey without needing to learn new tools directly in your team's channel. We added custom background support. And what I'm going to show here, first of all, blurring the background to, to minimize distractions. But we've also added the support for other images. So for example, I could pretend I'm at work when I'm not. Or I could pretend I'm at the beach and you know, have a bit of fun. But every now and then, we, we also have, uh, you know, every now and then you have a need for some extra firepower. And sometimes, 
I like to bring my colleagues out here in for a meeting. So you can see how you can have a lot of fun with these custom backgrounds and just import any picture you want to have a, an interactive background. To be inclusive for folks who are either hard of hearing or just are in a noisy background where they want to be able to read the transcripts of a, of a meeting that's ongoing, we support live captions, which is accessible through the menu during a call. And some of you may have seen this in Satya's keynote earlier this week, and we're also demoing it over the, the Teams area over there. We have the ability to make a, 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 a meeting room with a whiteboard, with a physical whiteboard, be, be, become transparent with the person standing in front of it. So as you saw this, this person standing in front, we could, argue, we could use AI to extract the ink from the whiteboard, superimpose it on top of them so it appears as though they're transparent, which is a great way to, be, to have an inclusive meeting for, for remote attendees. So I'm going to quickly switch over to my, my Hub 2S for a second. This is a beautiful collaboration device that we love to use at Microsoft. And, and uh, let me just, I'm converting this. Can you guys still hear me? Yes. I'm converting this picture. This is a picture I've taken in a, of a physical whiteboard in my, in my office. And sometimes I want to continue that collaboration on a beautiful device like this without needing to redesign it all. So what I did, I used the magic wand to basically extract the ink, and it put, every, put all the whiteboard things to the back. And watch as I, I could erase existing writing. I can also move ink around. So as you can see, this is a fantastic way to continue a whiteboard session on a, from a physical to a digital environment. Now, AI is able to help us here analyze my messy handwriting, and with the same cursor, I can make my handwriting look a lot more legible. So there's a, a bunch of really handy tools here to make your whiteboarding sessions more interactive and easier to read. Let me switch back over to my machine here. So let me go into the next chapter, which is productivity on the go. We all have smartphones, and we all have busy lives. And what better way to be on top of your work than when you're on the go and not have to rely on when you get to your desk and all these actions have piled up. So I'm going to start with an experience called Play My Email, which is a great way to stay on top of your email inbox as you're driving or commuting to work. So let's, let's take a look. I have five emails for you right now, including a change to your day. This will take a few minutes. NBC RN DNP Dolores Roberts changed the time for lunch with Mary from 3.30 p.m. to 3 p.m. Just so you know, you also have presentation to MCIU preparation at the same time. So it's giving a schedule update. That's helpful. About 20 minutes ago, Alvin Lund sent an email about Center for Disease Control just to you. This is a long one. Hey, Cortana, skip this. So hands-free interaction with my with Cortana. About 20 minutes ago, FACP FITSA MPHT MMD Sherry Clay sent a long email about high patient admissions to four addresses. Hey Cortana. It's set. Flag for later. Although the I'll demo flag would, it for follow-up. Although the demo would continue longer, I also have the capability to reply to emails with short responses. But this is just a really effective way to hit the ground running when you get to the office and you've already triaged some of your emails on the way in and know what to expect. We've also announced natural language search capability in Outlook. So here's Show me example. emails with attachments from the past month. So using voice, we're able to find an email from the last month with an attachment, OK? So let's look at another one example. Show me emails from Megan in April. Everybody can relate to looking for an email and having a hard time finding it. Simply by using your voice, you are able to find an email from a specific person in a specific time frame. And this is just such a powerful way of being efficient on the go. Now, Cortana also works on your behalf to analyze your emails to look for commitments you may have made. So for example, it helps prepare you for meetings, manage tasks, and it's all, it's all kept very secure and, and, and away from anyone else. What you see here is actionable messages where it recommends like, hey, you made some commitments to these tasks. Are they, are they done or are they not maybe a task? And I've interpreted it wrong. And it gets better over time. And so these are simple buttons that really make it interactive and easy to react to. 
And what Cortana's also identified is you probably need some focus time to work on these things, and it can help you select times in your calendar which you can book without having to actually physically do that in your calendar. Simply by pressing one of those buttons, one of those options, it's put one hour of focus time in my calendar to help me get my work done. One of my favorite features by far is the ability to set up a rich meeting in Outlook. I'm replying to this message, and I press this button here. What that does is let me convert the email to an event, and those same attendees from that email are listed in this, in this here. I select the time, and watch as I scroll that down to a window that fits everybody. This is really powerful when you think about the availability, being able to see people's availability directly in Outlook as you set up a meeting. I added a conference room, and I made it a rich Teams meeting. So this is, this is something that probably takes you longer to do on a, on a PC than you could do on the phone. And you could do this while you're on the go, saving you minutes every week for sure. Outlook also protects your interests in terms of security. So for example, here is an, a, a malicious email from someone that, that sounds like someone you may have interacted with. But it recognizes that maybe this isn't someone who you think it is. So it's a phishing email. And if you do happen to click the link, We'll block it for you so that you don't end up going to a malicious site and getting malware on your device. We announced the new Office app this week. And the new Office app has this awesome feature here, this action screen. When I open this up, you'll see a series of, of mobile optimized scenarios, such as the image to Excel here. So we've taken a picture of a document which has a table. This table is now being analyzed, and the contents of that is being inserted directly into an Excel sheet. So we've gone from a physical piece of paper to a digital version of that in Excel in a matter of seconds. A great way to minimize the amount of work it takes. You don't have to do line by line inputting, which might be more error prone as well. Another example that I use very commonly is the ability to sign a document. So here we have sign a PDF. So someone sent me a PDF I need to sign. It's a fairly straightforward use case, but it's right within this Office app. I can scroll down. I can touch where I want to sign. I add my signature, and voila, you have your, your document that's signed, and you can send it off. Great time saver. While you're on the go, you don't need to do that from your PC. Print something out, scan it in, et cetera. OK, the last chapter is about how we put AI to work on your behalf and help you get things done more efficiently. So we'll start off with PowerPoint ideas and designer. As you can see, I've got a very basic project here. I'm going to use ideas to populate a picture in here. And there's a series of visuals here which PowerPoint has designed for me. Here's a, a, a very basic bulleted list. And not only did it convert it into a very elegant slide that's ready for a presentation, but it's also chosen very specific icons which are aligned to the messaging that it has interpreted from your bullet points, which are, by the way, super easy to change out if you want to come up with some different ones. But it's just a great way where AI is working on your behalf to save you countless minutes, priceless minutes, when you're building presentations. So I'm going to snap out of PowerPoint for a second to do a live demo. This is always the riskiest part. It could go wrong. But I'm going to, I'm going to show you this uh, ability to use subtitles in a foreign language. So in order to do this, I've got this spoken language is German. I'm going to put subtitles in English. Hopefully, this works. And, uh, here we go. Uh, guten Tag, Leute. Ich heiße Jason. Ich, mache, ich, ich spreche jetzt auf Deutsch und ich hoffe, dass alles auf Englisch lesenbar ist. Close enough. You get the idea. That was more my bad German than the bad translations. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so let's continue. Within Word, we have the support for at mentions. So for example, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to assign a, an action to Megan. And I'm going to ask her to make some, some edits before we submit this. This action in itself has caused an email to be generated on the back end. I never needed to leave Word. And this is the email that, that Megan would have received. She can directly open this, go into the Word document, see my action, and respond. This is just a highly efficient way of staying in, within my workflow and giving actions to other people where they can find where they need to jump in. Word also comes with ideas. As I pop out the ideas menu here, I've got a document that I'm, a professional document I'm creating. And AI has analyzed the words. It, it knows how long it would take to read, how long it would take to speak. It's recognized some uncommon words, recommending some alternatives. 
here's a, an example where formality could be improved. Instead of saying the word can't, it's suggesting I use the word cannot. And as you can see, there's a series of other refinement recommendations to help you become a better writer or to be more professional in your documents. Excel comes with ideas too. And what I'm going to show you here is how we've got this chart of all this, all this data. And Ideas has proactively suggested a number of different formats for your, for, your, for your charts. And so here's an example where it's identified two outliers, which you may not have found if you had created your own charts. So this is a really efficient way. Without having spent any time generating charts, you can scroll through here and see if there's anything of interest that might have put a perspective on this data that you wouldn't have otherwise come up with. We've also added natural language query support. So in the same way as before, I have, a, I have a chart here. And I'm going to ask a question. So in this example, which is our best selling product? And it's given an answer here. Tires and tubes are the number one selling product. So what about in 2019? And the, product, the answer is different. So it filters out based on 2019 data. So here, which categories have sold over 100,000 in 2019? And again, it provides the answers right here. This is a really effective way of analyzing a lot of your, a lot of your data without needing to do the hard work. And AI helps you, helps you do that quickly. When we upload videos to stream, they are automatically transcribed. And so as you can see here, you can do a search for the word thermal issue, and it shows you which instances in the video that, that wor those words show up. This is a great way of jumping to, ver to relevant sections in a, in a video. And what I'm going to show you now is, is the audio enhancement feature. I'm going to play the sound. You're going to hear a lot of distortion. And then we're going to turn on the audio enhance so you can see how that works. The fracture issue where if you're running for a long period of time, there uh, seems to be some thermal issues that are tripping a breaker. So, uh, so if you're running for short periods of time. So you can see how AI is helping make the quality of your videos better by reducing the background noise, all done by AI in the cloud. Microsoft Forms is, uh, is a great way to, to poll people for feedback on, on things. And so here's an example of, a, of a, a form that I've created. So think of this as a, as a form you want to put on a, at the end of a video to see what people thought. And so very basic form, question multiple choice, a rating. And what's cool about this is the ability to share. Notice that there's a URL which we've just copied. We're going to go to the stream video that I want feedback on. And on this interactivity tab, I can paste the URL, give a name to the form, and at this timestamp, 18 minutes, I'm going to add it to the timeline. You might see a little circle here, which is where that form shows up. When the, the, the progress of the video hits that point, every viewer of the video will see that form pop up. This is a fantastic way of getting real-time feedback from the videos that people are watching without having to send them emails where people don't respond as, as quickly as they would in this. Now, the new Edge browser comes with collections. Collections is this icon here. You should give it a try. It's a great way of, of collecting information from the, from the web without needing to deal with the URLs. So here we have a collection. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to this tab, and I'm going to drag some content into here. You see how easy this drag and drop functionality is. I can move things around. And I can also export this to Word or Excel. So if you're, if you're putting together holiday plans or if you're working on a work project, Look at how nicely this, this, this elegant form is put together with the references at the bottom as well in case you need to go back to the original content with the URLs. A great way to, to do that. And last but not least, Microsoft Search in Bing. So as you can see here, I'm being very vague here with, with my search for Jason's office. But the artificial intelligence is able to determine through the Microsoft graph that most likely I'm talking about Jason, and it searches for that. And in the same way, Bill in Building 3, it knows through the organizational chart at the company I'm, I'm at that there's two bills in Building 3. And so with, with such vague searches, we're able to be, be able to provide many, many intelligent solutions to some of the vague questions. So that concludes 35 demos in 20 minutes. I, I doubt you'll have had a more fast-paced presentation while you're at Ignite. I really hope you enjoyed this and found this informative. Thank you all for your time. I'll be around here for questions if you have any. Thank you.